On January the 8th, the U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division and the U.S. Department of Education Office for Civil Rights issued extensive official guidance to public schools regarding student discipline to meet obligations under federal law to administer student discipline without discriminating on the basis of race, color, or national origin. The departments have made clear their intent to investigate student discipline practices in schools based on complaints received from parents or students about possible racial discrimination in student discipline. So the Departments of Education and Justice have made clear that schools that dis disproportionately discipline students of identifiable racial groups, whether intentionally or not, may be subject to legal action. Also, schools that use exclusionary forms of discipline, such as suspensions, deny instructional time to excluded students, which may be a civil rights violation and may be subject mm -hmm. to legal action. All of this stems from the fact that the CRDC data show an increasing number of students are losing important instructional time due to such exclusionary practices. The department states that the increasing use of disciplinary sanctions such as in-school or out-of-school suspensions, expulsions, or referrals to law enforcement creates the potential for significant negative educational and long-term outcomes. They can contribute to what has been termed the school-to-prison pipeline. Exclusionary discipline practices have an array of serious educational outcomes, such as an increased likelihood of dropping out, substance abuse, or involvement with the juvenile justice system. Therefore, the departments have issued guidance to all public primary and secondary schools, which includes public charter schools. They call for a safe, inclusive, and positive school climate that provides students with supports such as evidence-based tiered supports and social and emotional learning. I will outline here a short, condensed, brief summary of what they feel are effective positive school climates, characteristics, and what they should include. They should include a school or a district-wide approach <clears throat> to classroom management that seeks to create a safe, inclusive, and positive educational environment, assurances that appropriate student behavior is positively reinforced, and behavioral interventions that are tied specifically to students' behavioral needs, encouraging students to accept responsibility for misbehavior and acknowledging their responsibility to follow consistent school rules assisting students in developing social and emotional competencies, self-management, self-awareness, and responsible decision-making to avoid conflict and refocus on learning. Referrals for students with complex social, emotional, or behavioral needs. Considering peer mediation, restorative justice procedures that are safe, inclusive, and positive. Involvement of families, students, and school staff in the development and implementation of discipline policies and codes of conduct, and communicating those policies regularly and clearly. Emphasis of positive intervention over student removal. Training and professional development for all school personnel, including teachers, administrators, and support staff, with professional development and training in evidence-based techniques on classroom management, conflict resolution, and de-escalation strategies that decrease classroom disruptions and use exclusionary discipline sanctions as a last resort. Again, this is a short excerpted list from the guidance section of the documents that I sent to you last week for your review. I also sent you a link to Arnie Duncan's video proclamation regarding student discipline last week. Ultimately, this is nothing new to our philosophy of education at Performance Academies. It's nothing different than we've been holding dear in our organization for the last 12 years and in our schools. These are topics that we frequently go over at in-service trainings, and they are policies embedded in our code of conduct, our student handbook, our staff handbook, 
our board policy manuals, our character education programs, and our behavior management programs. The difference is that the federal departments are systematically moving to collect data, to review data, and enforce the policies in meaningful and significant ways. If you have questions about our code of conduct, if you have questions about our positive behavioral support system, or implementation of behavior intervention plans for students, please ask your principal, ask me, ask our special ed director, Wendy Sarmer, an assistant superintendent, or another administrator. Hopefully you're beginning to see, if you haven't already, how all these important programs tie into one another for the betterment of our students. Ours is a balanced approach. <clears throat> I've said it many, many times, it is a balanced approach of appropriate and relevant consequences, but equally and arguably more importantly, it's a system of school-wide positive behavioral supports that should be used as they're intended. In other words, no dragon dollars are not optional. Implementing the BIP in your classroom is not optional. Not knowing the goals of a BIP for your students is also not acceptable and neither is failure to implement those goals on the BIP. So the proverbial rubber has now met the road, and I commend the U.S. Department of Education for moving forward in a systematic way to implement and enforce empirically supported best practices from school psychology, psychology, and education that are known to strengthen and support positive behavior and good classroom management. All our children can learn. All our children can learn. All our children can demonstrate positive prosocial behaviors that we desire. It's our job to teach them, to reinforce it, and to help them learn. It's our goal to help kids be the absolute best they can be, and they cannot do that if they aren't at school. I agree wholeheartedly that suspensions should occur only in issues of safety, and only when all else has truly been tried in the spirit of helping students be as successful as they can be. So use your code of conduct consistently and faithfully. Use your system of positive behavioral supports, your Dragon Dollars, your behavior management system, responsive classroom techniques, special education tools, and our anti-bullying program faithfully. Do it today, do it always, do it for our kids. Yours in educational excellence now and always. Thank you for listening. Thank you for learning all you can about school wide positive behavioral supports and student discipline in our schools.